Hey, security researcher here once again. Thanks for checking out this video. If you own a cell phone, tablet, or Internet of Things device that accesses the cellular network, for example, a home security system, the information in this video impacts you. If you've seen any of my other videos, maybe you've heard me mention several massive backdoors into, the, into your devices that nobody wants to talk about. Thanks to a public release by a company known as Adaptive Mobile Security, I finally get to talk about one of these backdoors, and hopefully without getting into too much trouble. That said, the following information is not intended for the criminally minded. This really truly is about education. You cannot make informed decisions about how to safely deal with your technology without understanding the least bit about it. And that's what I'm hoping to help you do today. So sit back, relax, and let's take this ride together on this installment of Security Researcher here on YouTube. First of all, there's something very important that you need to understand about your wireless devices. Wireless devices contain two-way radios. In the United States, the regulatory body with oversight of these types of devices is called the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. In Canada, I believe it's called Industry Canada. In England, it's called something like Ofcom. But there are similar bodies like this in just about every country on the planet. So there's a government-regulated relationship between your device, the cellular service provider, and the device manufacturer. These regulatory bodies define the operating parameters of your wireless technology by defining what frequencies and broadcast strengths can be used by the device. Should a device operating on a service provider's network operate outside of its license parameters, the service provider and or device manufacturer will be held accountable and will be responsible for any fines or penalties. So let's put this into perspective for a second. There are more cell phones operating in the United States than there are people. So there are literally hundreds of millions of these devices operating on the network at any one time. Should a problem arise, the responsible parties could be economically crippled or destroyed by the fines and penalties. In order to mitigate the potential damage and to effectively and efficiently maintain network operations, they've built in several massive backdoors into every portion of your device for legitimate network maintenance purposes. These backdoors cannot be tampered with, and the existence of these backdoors renders these devices almost unsecurable. This video will cover one of these backdoors. In this video, we're going to cover a disclosure by a company called Adaptive Mobile Security that just so happens to fall into my wheelhouse. I know quite a bit about the technology that they're bringing up, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of love in with all of this and fill in some of the blanks that they don't in their disclosure. They're calling the attack that they've discovered SimJacker and referring to it as the next generation of spying over mobile devices. A link to their website is located in the description below this video. In this video, we're going to cover who's at risk, the attack vector being used, the technology that's needed to control just about any device that's in use on the network today, what can be done during one of these attacks, and what you can do about it. So first, let's talk about who's at risk. If your device takes a SIM card, this attack affects you. It doesn't matter who made your phone, it doesn't matter whose operating system's on the phone, or what their marketing team has convinced you about the security of your cell phone. This attack touches on one of the gaping backdoors found in every cellular phone, cellular-enabled tablet, or Internet of Things device that uses a SIM card. Oh, but this must require a crack team of cyber ninjas, so I don't have anything to worry about. This is just more fear-mongering by a troglodyte that doesn't like technology. Yeah, well, according to Adaptive Mobile Technology, they've detected over 1 billion instances of this attack in the wild. And they state that all that's needed to accomplish the attack is a $20 GSM modem and a laptop. So you might want to ignore what you think you know about how safe and secure your phone is and pay attention. What's the attack vector being used? Technology-wise, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Universal Integrated Circuit Card, UICC, or Smart Card. UICCs. Call me psychic, but I bet you've seen one of these before. Even if you're not computer savvy, I bet you even use one on a regular basis and don't even know it. You know that little chip you see on the left side of your credit card? That's a UICC, or Smart Card. If you cut that little chip out and jam it into a cell phone, bang, it's a SIM card. It's pretty much the same technology. The UICC's primary job when it comes to your wireless technology is to act as a gatekeeper to your identification information and your cell phone's keys to operate on the cellular network. 
These chips were implemented to stop something that was happening a lot during the 80s and 90s, a crime called cell phone cloning. Because these chips are considered secure, they're trusted to protect your identification and are used by some payment systems as your official identification. If you're able to send money from phone to phone, you use your phone like a wallet, or you tap your phone on the screen of an ATM, that system is most likely using the relationship between the phone's near-field communication capabilities and the UICC to identify you. That little chip, believe it or not, is actually a tiny little computer. It has its own CPU, its own operating system, a tiny bit of RAM, an I.O. interface, a toolkit, and within that toolkit is a fully functional browser. This really tiny computer can interact with and also operate completely separate of the phone itself. These tiny computers will respond to what are called silent SMS messages. These are commands, not text messages, that are sent directly to your device, not to you. This means you will never see them. They won't show up in your text message archive at all, which means you will also never know that someone sent a command to your phone in order to trigger it to do things like discreetly call a phone number or to discreetly answer a call. This turns the phone into an eavesdropping device and was a common method used for surveillance back when cell phones looked like this. Other commands allow the attacker to retrieve your location information, device serial number, your IMSI or MC, all of which can be used for targeting, tracking, and additional penetration purposes. You can also remotely kill the SIM card so it can't make calls, send text messages, etc. until you get a new SIM card. It's a terrible inconvenience, those denial of service attacks. If an attacker was out to ruin you personally, they could send your significant other or your employer a text message from your phone. For example, what would life be like if someone sent a text message from your number to your significant other that read something like, Honey, I've been cheating on you with your cousin since before we were married. I just had to get that off my chest. I don't want to talk about it right when I get home, but we'll talk about it after dinner. I hope you understand. Love you, hon. Imagine walking in the door that night without knowing that was ever sent. Would that inconvenience your life? Would that cost you money? Most likely, yes. These are just a couple of highlights of the more than 200 different commands your phone will recognize coming from one of these little guys. As part of the toolkit on board the card, there's also a fully functional browser. This browser appears to be the core of the disclosure by adaptive mobile security. However, it's always been my understanding that this is the browser you trigger through silent SMS commands in order to remotely install commercial cell phone spyware when you only know the phone number of the target phone. This is also why I've been personally warning businesses, organizations, and agencies from Chicago to Washington, D.C. to take your cell phone numbers off your business cards. See my video titled, How Your Business Card Could Be Putting Your Business at Risk for More Information. The UICC, or SIM card, also has direct connectivity to the baseband without ever going through the operating system, which means this impacts every phone regardless of what operating system or security apps are installed on it. So here's the thing about endpoint cell phone security. If you can compromise the baseband, you don't care what operating system or apps are running on top of the baseband. You own the baseband, you own the phone. You can receive input information from every part of the phone, the microphone, camera, text input, screen captures, etc. So maybe you're in the banking and financial services sector and you use some super cool encryption program that encrypts your messages and sends them over the blah, blah, blah. Well, remember, once your device is owned, the attacker can see what you can see and read what you type. They don't need to crack the encryption on whatever program you're using. So... Let's talk about some things here. If your device is compromised by silent SMS command, has a compromised baseband because of an MC catcher or cell phone tower simulator, or it's been compromised with cell phone spyware, here's some things that you need to know. It's highly unlikely that you will ever know that it's happening to you. Commercial solutions have it written into the programming to intentionally hide itself and its activities. An attacker with the skill set will do the same. Keep in mind that once your device is compromised, that super awesome encryption package you use to send and receive messages is pointless. Depending on the level of compromise, the attacker can see your screen, can see your keystrokes. You're creating and reading those messages in plain text, so the attacker doesn't need to crack your encryption to see your communications. 
These devices can be tricked into giving away subscriber information like your MC, device information like the serial number or IMEI, and your location information. These are all things that can be used for additional targeting, tracking, and penetration purposes. Last but not least, these devices can be used as eavesdropping devices. So you have to secure these devices around sensitive conversations, planning sessions, or business meetings. The bottom line is no matter what the marketing surrounding these devices implies, these devices truly border on a line somewhere between toys and tools. I know you're dependent on them and some of you are addicted to them, but it's time for a head check here. Your cell phone is the weakest portion of the attack surface surrounding your data. I've documented and will continue to document that these devices have been and will continue to be vulnerable to text messages, malicious charging, man in the middle attacks, cell phone spyware, malicious applications, ineffective security and antivirus software, and a whole litany of other local and remote attacks using any number of the communication ports on the device itself. I have and will continue to document that the industry has proven over and over again over the course of more than a decade that they are incapable of effectively securing these devices. So who's doing all of this? My direct knowledge stops here and I'm not interested in picking any fights with friends. So I will direct you over to Adaptive Security's website. The link is in the description below. There you can learn about who they believe is performing these attacks. If you follow the links that they provide in their disclosures, they have a lot of interesting evidence and data and they're pretty confident in their findings. Adaptive Mobile Security is giving a presentation at the Virus Bulletin Conference in London, England on October 3rd of this year. I look forward to seeing what other disclosures they bring forward and may produce a follow-up video at that time. If there's any of my viewers, subscribers that live in the UK and can get to this event or are scheduled to attend the Virus Bulletin Conference on October 3rd, any information you can get directly from the conference would be greatly appreciated. If you can get the attention of one of these folks, I would very much like to interview them, possibly even live stream it so that you can ask questions as well. So what can you do about it right now? I'm sorry to tell you, but as far as I've been able to ascertain, the industry is working on security improvements and will most likely have to issue new SIM cards to everybody with updated security and a modified toolkit. At this time, almost all of the SIM cards out there have and will continue to have this vulnerability for some time to come. In the meantime, let's use this as a learning experience and change our behaviors around these devices accordingly. This isn't tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, and it hasn't been for some time. Statements like that are the ramblings of fools and the ignorant. To adhere to that way of thinking undermines the seriousness of the problem, and it's only causing you to expose yourself to more and more risk. The worst security you can have is a false sense of security based on ignorance and arrogance. These devices are incredibly vulnerable, and because people have bought into slick marketing around these devices, it's putting you, your business, and even our national security at risk. No joke. The thought that any of this was possible has been treated as a joke for so long that we regularly allow these devices into some of our most sensitive activities and areas, and we don't give it a second thought. If you found value in this information, please hit that subscribe button, please hit the notifier bell, and share this on social media with your friends and family. Please stay tuned because there's more fun to come. I am Security Researcher, and if you just gave me the last 13 minutes and 49 seconds of your life, I want you to know that I really appreciate it.